What's going on, everyone? You're listening to the Asian MMA Podcast, where we talk about everything and anything going on in the world of Asian MMA. Today's show is brought to you by the smell of weight cuts in the morning. Mm-hmm, good. I'm Dana Bluen, and today we're revisiting the coverage of the One Championship TV deal in the U.S., specifically how it will impact the One App users in the States. This is something that listener Kenny Sacrifica asked me over on YouTube I looked into it a bit more, and when Chachu was actually on Ariel Hawani's show, he indicated that the app would no longer be free in the U.S. at some point next year. I reached out to some of my contacts at One to ask for clarification on this. It seems as though the app will no longer be available in the U.S. after January 1st as a result of Turner Broadcasting having exclusive broadcast rights in the U.S. market. I think it's going to be interesting to see if one follows the same strategy with other Western markets as they continue to negotiate TV deals. 2019 is most likely going to give us a much better view of that. We'll be able to see how they're responding in the different Western markets, places where ad revenue could potentially be very beneficial to them. Now, if you're a U.S. user, though, of the app, keep in mind that you have many mobile VPN options available to you. I'm just saying, so if you don't have cable, but you want to get a a VPN so you can still use the app, that is definitely an option. So in other news, we've got Road FC, and they have confirmed that Road FC 52 on February 23rd of next year will be the finals of their $1 million lightweight tournament, where we're going to see Shamil Zavrov, sorry, Zavrov and uh, Mansour Baranui they're going to fight for a shot at the reigning lightweight champ, Kwon Asol, and the $1 million purse that's up for grabs. Now, this has been a really fantastic tournament, I've got to say. You know, there's been a lot of good fights, and that cash prize at the level that Road FC is at for a promotion is fantastic. And it really changed the dynamic for a lot of the people in Road and sort of like that part of... Uh, East Asian MMA that's going on with Korea. You know, that type of stuff is what makes Asian MMA so interesting. We have all these fringe things going on, and you just wouldn't see something like that in the UFC, probably not even in Bellator. Also, I mean, come on, guys. Soccer kicks and knees to the head of a grounded opponent, those are some of the things that really make Asian MMA stand out. I know we don't have it in every promotion. Even one is done away with the soccer kicks, but where else do you find that? You don't find that anywhere else. Lastly for this episode, uh, one's first show of 2019 will see the return of one of my favorite fighters, Kotsetsu Boku, also known as No Face. He's going to be taking on Bruno Pushi. He hasn't fought since a brutal knockout by suplex at the hands of Christian Lee. Uh, back in December 2017 in Bangkok. Now, I I was cage side for that event, and Christian slammed him just like one section of cage away from me. You could see Boku stiffen up right away. And at one point, it actually looked like he was having a seizure. It it was a brutal knockout, and he was just suplexed right on his head, and he was out right away. You know, Christian landed, you know, a few punches before the ref was able to actually stop the fight. But it was the suplex that did him in. Even if you watch the video of that fight, you know, one does a great job of making sure that you can't see the doctor attending to Boku. None of that is ever shown on camera. But you can see just everyone looking at what's going on with Boku. Everyone's just fixated on it. At one point, Christian walks towards the announcers and like is walking towards the camera and he's sort of motioning that he wants a shot at the belt. And you can see his sister, Angela Lee, and her uh, husband in the background who were in Christian's corner that night. And and their faces are just shocked. They're looking over at Boku, and it's just like, man, you can tell what everyone is fixated on. It it was that brutal. And at the time that it happened, everyone was super worried. And, you know, the doctor was out there. Like I said, they took him out on a stretcher that night just as a precaution. It turned out that he ended up being okay because – I saw him later that evening, actually, at the Fighters Hotel in Bangkok, and he was fine. He was heading out for the night, you know, to have some dinner with his uh, teammates. But 
at the time it happened, it was just a brutal knockout. With that being said, I'm super excited to see him back in action. I'm really happy that he took this much time off after a knockout like that before he fought, before he decided to fight again. Because you don't really know what the, the physical ramifications of something like that are. And, I mean, you at least want to give yourself time to heal. It's a tough situation for a fighter because I'm sure that's how he makes his living, like any professional fighter. But, you know, they've got to look after their body as well. Now, I don't know if the layoff was intentional, if he chose to do that, or if it just no other fights lined up for him at the time. Either way, I'm super excited to see Boku back. I mean, I think it's going to be a great fight, and I'm really looking forward to that one. I'm happy that it's, you know, January next year and one's putting it on. So, you know, Boku, man, good luck. I can't wait to see you fight again. One of my favorites. I've always loved watching you fight. Now, that's all I have for you guys today. Now, to stay up to date with all things Asian MMA, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Facebook. I'll have all the links down in the show notes. Check it out.